Kathy. Mary Ann. Amy. Chuck. Kathy. Tom. Steve. I know you two characters. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> and uh, I started coming up here when my daughter was a little too young to be coming up here, and now she likes to come up also. She's 11 now. And uh, so other Walker kids are big allies in this event because um, they're better at some of the games than I am. <laughs> and also kids like to relate to other kids. You'll think um, you'll find that in like the laundry and especially the games. You try to have to make sure that the, the Walker kids um, don't spend too much time jumping and stuff. They have to learn how to share. But um, so you're standing there, you're assigned to the games, you've read your manual, and um, all of a sudden a bunch of kids show up. What do you do? <laughs> First thing I do is you, obviously you look at the numbers, number of kids and their age. And um, I always try to ask the kids, have you gone to school yet? Have you done your chores? And kind of get a sense for what they already know about what's up here. And <coughs> if they're just arriving, if you know the schedule, um, um, you can. It's an opportunity to kind of do a pitch for the rest of the the events up here, or kind of if they've done everything else, then you know they're really ready to go and, and play some games. For the um, littler kids, and also in case it's raining, I don't know where you in the barn or in indoor kind of games, we have. Um, you always get the little two-year-olds that come up and they want to play. And you're pretty imposing, actually, in your costume. And they're kind of, some of them are kind of afraid. And so sometimes I'll just get down and talk to them so I don't look quite like such a, I don't know what, <laughs> some a scary figure. And um, get out in our bag of tricks. We have some bean bags that somebody made. And that's always... Um, you grab, these are our bushel baskets. Or if the bushel baskets are used, you just make a rope or a line, and you can just get a two-year-old to sit there and toss the bean bags and get him out. And that'll keep a little kid busy for a while. So that's like the lower end of things. <laughs> and um, let's see, a spelling bee was also a kind of a, a smaller group activity. A lot of times they'll do that in the school days, but there is a blackboard sometimes up there. Um, I guess you could just do it orally, but um, that's another kind of a quiet activity. Um, we've tried various crafty kinds of things over the years. Uh, yarn dolls, corn husk dolls, I think potato stamping, and a couple crafty things. And I think, I don't know if there's any more plans to do those kinds of things. Sometimes it works out okay, and sometimes you get kind of a mob. <laughs> so um, probably at this point, hands-on activities are not on the schedule. What or would crafts happen? activities. Crafts, er, yeah, crafts activities where you actually walk away with, with something. Um, sometimes it worked out okay. You just get a couple kids, and you can really be kind of one-on-one. -on -one. And then what ha started happening is we'd get whole brownie troops up expecting to make some kind of craft, and that just put us over the limit so quickly, we kind of had to back off. So if people ask you, where's the dolls or where's the this, just kindly explain that that activity isn't happening <laughs> more. So, um, but if, um, like most things up here, if you have any good ideas you want to try, we're always uh, up for new ideas because, as I say, this is not like a fixed program. We've changed it every year, practically. But we like to think this is working pretty well. Um, occasionally, this is what the yarn doll we used to make. Occasionally, I'll have one just slipped in my apron pocket to kind of keep and pull it out just to show kids um, or keep a little kid busy while their older sibling plays or something. Um, and another thing we tried once, and I kind of just keep it in my pocket of my apron sometime as a whizzer, which was string and a button. And uh, this spin, I don't know if anybody's seen one of these. You probably know, huh? What's your name again? Katie. Katie. And you pull the string and it, if you're good at it, you can get it to keep spinning. 
Um, so I pull these out if it's kind of slow and there's just one or two kids. Um, and then we also have the metal puzzles, which I don't know, they kind of look like chain and a horseshoe and you have to twist it the right way to get it off. Those are around here somewhere. And those are the things that um, I let one of the Walker kids, my daughter's bed, I can't, I've never tried it. But you sit down with a small group and you can kind of pass that around. And, but that obviously is kind of for a smaller group activity. And I don't know, we'll try to dig those up before the event. Uh, cat's Cradle. Um, the metal game and the Cat's Cradle are also a good thing for the kids to be doing if they're hanging out in the log house, they have nothing to do, or they're churning butter and nobody's there, or if um, um, we have some yarn up here. And um, Margaret, who did the clothing, her granddaughter sometimes steps up here and knows all kinds of fabulous Cat's Cradle things. And there's the klutz books that have um, lots, if you want to bone up on Cat's Cradle and can't remember it from your childhood, um, uh, this is another, another good, all you need is a piece of string. And um, there's some kind of fancy things to do. And if, I uh, can't remember her granddaughter's name. <sighs> Pardon, Kara? I can't remember which one. She would just, like the kids would come down, they'd just be sitting on the granary porch doing the string games or the metal games, and you know, the kids just flock to that kind of stuff. So if, um, if, if it's raining or if it's kind of slow or if you just see kids that need entertaining or that kind of thing, the, the string games are another good way to go. And that's, um, let's see, bean bag toss. So those are kind of really small small level games. Um, then there's uh, a few that are um, dress up is on the list here, which sometimes up at the in the children's area we'll have a bin with a couple aprons, a couple dresses, and a couple bonnets. And again that uh, a lot of kids will show up in their favorite American Girls Kirsten outfit and so forth, or the Little House in the Prairie outfit. But the, sometimes we'll have bonnets for the little kids just to try on. You have to be careful that they don't walk off with them, though, and wear them the whole day. We had a problem one year that there were these kids running around with walker cost, uh, clothes on. But uh, I don't know if we'll try that again or not. I guess that depends on how many things we have left. So that's... Uh, um, I think the only uh, one reason to let kids try on an apron is to uh, play the, the fruit relay game, and um, which it makes a difference if you're wearing a dress or if you're wearing pants with that game. Um, let's see, yarn doll. Uh, what else do we have here that's kind of low key? There's a couple circle games, which you still need a small group of children, but they're not active running games. Um, ring around the rosy, which uh, there's a couple of rhymes in here. Ring a ring a rosy, a bottle full of posy. All the girls in our town ring for Josie, which is not the rhyme that I learned, but everybody. It's like most, a lot of the these kind of rhymes and the jump rope rhymes. We probably have all learned a different version, and I don't know if there's a way to find out what the correct 1880s version is <laughs> of ring around the rosy. Um, um, but if you know the one that you know best or memorize one of these, you can play Ring Around the Rosie with a small group of kids. Um, and there's a pass. I don't think we need to demonstrate Ring Around the Rosie. Um, let's see. What is the other circle game? It's called Fox and Geese, I believe. It's in here. And for that, um, that's probably a little older age kids, and you need two items, which if the ball might usually use something like a ball and a bean get bag. You need a larger and a smaller item. That's up there. <laughs> um, so this is our homemade ball, and I, I don't know if Margaret made it. 
it's just a ball of rags sewn up, but it uh, works for anti-over and fox and goose, and then the bean bags. Um, so the fox is the larger item, and the goose is the smaller one. And you sit in a circle, and it's kind of a race, and you start out with putting one uh, um, group of ten kids. The fox goes on one side of the circle, and the goose go goes on the other. And you can pass the, let me get this right, the goose can, just can go one from one person to one person around the circle. But the fox can be thrown across, over, and um, the object of the game is to n not get caught with both of them in your hands. And so, if, so you can only get rid of the goose by passing around one by one. But you try to, so you try to get rid of it quickly, and the other people are trying to, to, to throw the, the goose at you. And so, um, I don't know if this would work for the really tiny kids, but if you have a small group in a circle, um, this can be kind of fun. Any questions on that one, or you want to read sure. over it? So, um, and you could use any, if, if this bit ball is busy, you just have to uh, grab something else. I think there's another, I don't know what this thing is stuffed with. Um, so that's another smaller circle game. Fox and Geese, which is in here. And it might be also a good game to play after the, if it's hot and the kids have been playing tag and they, you need something a little more relaxing. Um, let's see if I can think of any other. Um, another thing that can work for smaller kids, and I don't know if this is Follow the Leader is just from the children's games, or is that considered a children's tour? Um, the way uh, Julia was really, I, I watched her do this, but I've never done it myself, is you get, uh, what works fairly well is to get a rope, uh, be careful not to steal all the jump ropes. <laughs> the person who's, this is one of the activities to follow that the person who's not doing the on-site things um, if you get a group of kids, looks like they want to move on out. You grab a rope for follow the leader, and it can be fairly young children, and you have them all hold on, and um, you can kind of have a mini tour of the ranch. And um, I think Julie made this up. Um, you tell them that you're going to uh, take a little tour, and you can do it to the tune of Old MacDonald, and the words Julie made up is, Old Jim Walker had a ranch, E-I-E-I-O, and on his ranch he had some piglets. And you can lead them down to where the pigs are, and the cows, and the horses, and uh, I don't know, a wagon, or a blacksmith, clang, clang, clang. <laughs> so it's just a way to get a little, a small group of children around the ranch. And um, they say the swish, swish of the laundry, or the cows, and um, the last note is, please keep safety in mind if you're leading a whole group of kids around. So that's something if you um, um, want to get out and about a little bit. And it's also might be a good way to get the kids a little bit acquainted with the ranch and they can go back later. Let's see. Um, okay, I'll go to my favorite one. This one is so fun. <laughs> the hoops and the sticks, which I think was mostly a girls' game. You're supposed to make them graceful and um, and skillful. You know, because it was, they say practice for catching uh, catching a ball, which I guess was considered a useful skill. These are embroidery hoops, uh, not to be confused with uh, the rope hoops, and. Um, require some, some practice, and we tie the ribbons to them, it makes it look really pretty. Although this does not deter the boys, you will find boys, dads, everybody trying this game because it's a lot of fun. And if you think you're really good, you can try the little tiny one. <laughs> and be careful that the, um, the sticks tend to get broken, and I uh, kind of keep an eye on that and make sure any broken sticks are done away with quickly. So the object of this game is to toss the um, you have two sticks, and when the, the hoop goes over it, everybody ready? <laughs> uh, 
um, is to fling the hoop to your partner, and then the partner will catch the hoop. And the way I do it is, is just put it on the cross and then bring the sticks apart. You'll see people trying it with one, and then the boys will get start getting into sword fights, and that's when you have to <laughs> kind of go mediate things. But this uh, gets to be pretty popular, which you'll have to use it up to your, leave it up to your judgment and um, tact, I should say, to make sure that people aren't um, staying on one game too long, getting too rough with it, not playing fairly, and, 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 et cetera. Uh, you will occasionally get kids who aren't very well supervised or the parents are causing part of the problem. So <laughs> you can just, but you're the, you're in charge, so it's perfectly fair to come up and say, uh, you know, it's, your turn is over, that kind of thing, and give them a fair warning. But this is one game that is great fun, and people will really enjoy it, but um, uh, and actually it looks like there's about five times more sticks than there used to be. We might need some more hoops, but um, I don't know if we'll have time to practice this. And it, the throwing part is the fun. The catching part is the tricky part. But um, anyway, it's it's great fun. Are you and supposed to catch them on both sticks or just one? Yeah, I th you're supposed to catch it. Actually, we've been debating about that. The way I, I read it, it's just you catch it like on both of them. Although you have them crossed anyway. I don't know if you're really supposed to catch it or or catch it just on one. Sounds um, hard either way. Would be hard. Yeah. yeah, it depends on how far and you, how far away you are and, and everything. And, but I, I try to discourage people from just using one stick like that, trying to fling it, because <laughs> that's the way I learned it anyway, is just to cross it. And you catch it, catch it in a cross and emphasize that you're supposed to be graceful. <laughs> Have you ever heard of the being called the three graces? No, I haven't. But... What? And then he actually dropped a book off at, at uh, the Ag Heritage Center a week or two ago, and it has this game, and they actually call the game just Graces. Graces? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I don't know, I'm trying to decide where they get the three from, which is yeah, just out of mythology, I guess. So, if you want to practice this, looks like um, you could probably use a few more hoops, and the ribbons do really make it pretty. It's, it's I think there was a picture in the newspaper of a couple of girls in costume playing this game one year. So it impressed the newspaper reporters anyway. They must have been very graceful at that point. Um, it just says the other child tries to catch the hoop with his sticks. And so I think uh, everybody will come up with their own version. So that's hoops and sticks. Um, let's see. Hopscotch is another one, which there's endless versions of hopscotch and how to play it. I don't know. The road is the only place to scratch a hopscotch in the ground, but that's another one to, that, that would have been around uh, back then. Let's see, the potato relay. Um, these fields would have been planted with potatoes, and probably you could have borrowed a couple of potatoes to play this game. Um, I only have apples today, which... I don't know if you ever had an apple or an orange up here on the ranch, I doubt your mom would let you take it out in the field and play with it. <laughs> so apples, maybe. Uh, the way this game is played is you have, I use the bushel baskets, and I set up, um, if you have enough kids, you can do two different teams. If you don't, you can just have one or two, one kid try it by themselves. And I just, depending on the age of the kid and how busy I want to keep them, I set up, you know, the start line, either, um, use a rock or just kind of scratch it in the dirt or if there's um, um, an extra piece of rope lying around you can use that as kind of your start or you can just tell the kids where it is and don't really sweat it too much and the object is to carry the, the fruit down the <laughs> down to the basket and drop it in and then you run back to the starting line tag the next person and they have to do it and if you drop drop it in the middle you have to pick up your potato apple will go back to the beginning, and you make a relay race out of it. And it's pretty funny. And again, you'll just ha have to, I would start them probably 10 or 15 feet away unless they're really, really little kids. And this is 
especially fun if you have a long dress on. Sometimes I think it's easier actually if you have a dress, um, but if you're uh, for actually for the children with the shorter dresses, it's probably easier because you're not going to trip. But doing all, any of these activities with a dress is always <laughs> it's always interesting for me. By the end of the day, I don't I don't notice it. So that's the potato relay, and just make sure you don't take the apples or potatoes that the cooks in the log house need. Um, uh, if we really have it together, there'll be potatoes or something in with the children's game. But you can um, improvise on that one, too. And that one is... Um, I don't know, five or ten kids, maybe. I don't know if you've ever gotten an actual huge relay going on that game. And then jump rope. This one is so popular. Um, I don't know if I remember to mention that sometimes you'll be assigned to the game station and like there's nobody there. I remember one time I said, oh, this is a good time to go get a drink of water. So I go down to get a drink of water. I come back, there's like 15 kids there. So it's, it's kind of a hot and cold activity. So you'll, if you're you look ahead of time, you'll figure out when during your shift, like the school go gets out, or the tours get over, or occasionally just big busloads of kids will come down, or carloads of kids. So um, you always have to be kind of ready for. It's not like a steady activity, like with most things. The, the log house it can be packed in there, and depending on the weather. Um, but the jump rope is the one thing that you can kind of keep going. And this is what I was trying to say. If you're the person in charge of the, the ongoing games. If you're stuck turning the rope, it's really hard to get away to catch those boys who are sword fighting over there with the hoops and the sticks. And so as quickly and gracefully as you can, if you can talk an older child or an adult into being, they're called enders, the, the jump rope turners, then you'll save yourself a lot of trouble. Although, um, uh, um, Sooner or later, the person running the, the station will end up having to be an ender. Or, and this is also another good job for your walker uh, kids, um, to be an ender. And I think, I still haven't figured out which is our jump rope. And we play up on, just that on the, the kind of the, towards the Miller house, that end is kind of a flat spot. But by the end of the day, it gets to be a little bit, uh, the, the grass is gone, <laughs> so if you're, I guess we're not doing two days a week. By the second, by the second or third uh, Walker Ranch fall event day, you'll know where the jump rope has been, because all the grass will be worn away. And um, something that Julie and I researched a couple of years ago is that jump roping used to be a boys' game, and it was a competitive kind of thing, and and, uh, and it was more like an athletic event than jump roping, and then. Uh, and maybe this is the beginning of women's lib, then the girls somehow got into the game, and when the verbal part got along with it, then of course the girls kind of took over that whole event. And that's, it was supposedly only about a hundred years ago that the jump rope rhymes uh, came into being, and, and it's, the rhymes make it fun and make it e easier for the enders to keep a nice rhythm, and, and some of the rhymes go with um, you know, jumping down, turning around, teddy bear, teddy bear, turn around, those kind of things. So, I don't know about you, but I certainly forgot. I used to play jump rope for hours, and I just can never remember the rhymes. Um, so we've written a couple <laughs> into the book here. And um, fortune teller, fortune teller, please tell me what my husband's name will be, A, B, C, D. And then when you miss, that's the, the initial of your future husband. Or um, Cinderella dressed in yellow went downstairs to kiss her fellow. How many kisses did she give? One, two, three, four. And then when you miss, um, there's a whole bunch of them, and I've been looking in, um, pardon? Okay. <laughs> Just ask the kids. <laughs> and edit out anything that, uh, isn't appropriate. <laughs> so, um, you know, if it's a Beastie Boys rap song. <laughs> yeah, I don't even want to know what the kids on the streets these days are doing, but, uh, we'll try to keep it simple and clean. And here's Dana Banana, which is somebody, this is so 
modern up. I mean, I don't think there were books on jump rope rhymes 100 years ago. I'd be surprised. People just, it's the kind of thing that people just knew or made up or whatever. But if you're stuck, um, there are resources. And um, we we may have a list somewhere that we didn't put in. We, uh, I got to look in Julie's files. We came up with a couple of jump rope rhymes. And Typically, uh, you have two people holding the rope, and people will just line up, and some kids will just go on and on and on. And you have to um, have people take turns and just use your own judgment if you get tired. Think of another activity, and if it looks like you have enough kids to run a larger game of anti-over one of the tag games, just use that as an opportunity to switch to something else. And because the hoops and the sticks and the jump rope kids will get kind of stuck on. Uh, let's see, I think all that's left are the big tag games, which um, are something that requires a little more organization and a group of talented kids and, and an adult that can only be in charge of that game. So um, uh, anti-over is one that's been on this list of games uh, from the beginning. and. I think this was like a school recess kind of game because you play it over a building. And our building is the gas house, which it looks like it's been mowed around. Um, makes a really nice setting. And you need probably 10 people, I think. And here's our anti over ball. And you can read the rules in here. And it's um, the way they start out is you, you have two teams. And they'll, you'll start out on opposite sides of the, the house. And they mention here one way to decide on who goes first is you take a uh, flat rock, you spit on one side, and you use it like a heads or tails kind of thing. It's kind of a fun way to, to uh, start it out. And the, you have the two teams, and the object is to catch members of the other team. So they uh, call them Team A and Team B. So you get, gather on one side of the house so you can't see the other team. And the team who starts, who won the toss, says, Ante over, and you toss the ball over the house. And you want to try to toss it so they won't catch it. And so you try to bounce it off, or, you, or well, I don't know how far you can throw it. But you have to, it has to be, go over the house in their direction. Um, but you want them try to make it so they don't catch it. If they don't catch it, they yell anti over and toss it back to you. And you do want to catch it. Then if, but if they do catch it, then um, if someone has to actually catch it, and you can peek around and see if they're cheating or not, or else just to know if they're going to, um, if they're going to be coming. If someone does catch it, then that whole team that just caught the ball rushes around. And if you have the ball, then you tag somebody on the other team. And this, one of the strategies is you, when you're running around, if everybody holds their hands behind their back, then you don't know who has the ball. So, um, and you can throw it to tag somebody, or, but then you lose the ball, or else you can just hold it in your hand and tag somebody. And once you're tagged, then you join the team that got ta that tagged you. And so you're, I, the whole object of the game is to capture the other team. Does and the team that's under chase have to stay on their side? Oh, they, they go anywhere? you switch sides every turn. So, well, if you don't switch tie sides, if nobody catches it, you just sit there and throw it back and forth. And that's and so what you, you want to be the you want to catch the ball, and then you you immediately run to the other side, and then they are trying to make it to the opposite side, and then so, and so I don't know if but you it's safe if they get to the other side. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're okay. safe. And I was I don't know if you have to touch the wall or if you just you know once you're past the back, that's kind of flexible. I think we kind of would say once you got past the, you'll just have, that's the kind of thing you'll just have to make it up. So anyway, you end up throwing the ball, running around the other side, throwing the ball, <laughs> running around the other side. Um, I read that you can also have someone watching to make sure that they, they did catch the ball. Yeah, that's, you can kind of peek around the corner. That's, so, uh, peek around the corner. But I, yeah, so, I don't know if that's cheating or strategy. <laughs> But ideally, you're, you're, everybody's on there. And you can see that it's not a huge building. So um, 
it's not too hard to throw it over. And I, I don't know how big old schoolhouses used to be. And, um, but you need, yeah, I'd say probably 10, 10 or more people. And I think the, well, somewhere I've written in one of my manuals, I think age is six and up, but I think 10 or so might be a pretty good age. And it takes a couple, you might, it takes a little bit to get going to figure out your strategies and how to do it and everything. But that's the way that game is played. And it's, it gets to be, be kind of fun. And then people will see you playing it. Um, sometimes they have the baseball game going up in that field. And I don't think that would interfere too much with the ante over. But um, that, that's a fun one. And a lot of these are tag games, which... Um, probably always used to play kick the can and all those kind of games. So they've been going on for lots and lots of years. And these are just a couple of the, the versions we play. Um, Pros and Cranes is one that we play up on the field. And you need um, some kind of rope or markers to, to divide the field up. And again, um, I have written down somewhere, I think about 15 kids, but you need to wait for a fairly big group of kids. And the way this one is played, there's a diagram. I think it's still in the, oh, it's, in, it's not in the current manual. You have a square field and a line down the middle, um, in the middle, and the, uh, so you, uh, your safe area is behind you. It's kind of, like, it's opposite of like football or something. And so you, two teams line up on the center line and then there's a, you choose one person, which probably should be the, the, the walker volunteer to start. And the one team is the crows, and one team is the cranes. And you probably try to make the field about as big as you can make a level field up there. And um, so the two teams line up. And when the caller calls crows, then let me get this um, right. If you call crows, and the crows have to run back to their safe area. And the cranes, meanwhile, cross over and try to chase them. And if you tag somebody, then again, just like Anthea, where you go on the other side. And if they call cranes, then then you I don't know how close you have to stand to the middle line, obviously, maybe a couple of feet back. If the caller calls cranes, then the cranes try to reach their safe area before the crows cross over and tag them. So I don't know if that makes sense. And if, once things get going, and the caller can yell crows, and the crows start running, and then you, you then you switch and yell cranes, and then everybody has to turn around. And um, so it gets it, once they're used to it, you can kind of spice it up a little bit. Although the directions say don't switch every time, and you'll completely wear the kids out. So, Unless that's your motive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this one, um, and hopefully if you have older and younger kids playing on the same team, people will be play fairly. And, and uh, if you need, if you have almost enough kids to play, you try to re recruit some of the Walker kids to fill out your, your game to get started. And then maybe once people see it going. This kind of game, it's probably pretty easy to add people on. You just say you're a crow, you're a crane, and, and get going. Which in the jar, I, I've seen played once. You have a hay bale, which there's usually some around here. And you need um, some of these ropes again. We're going to need a lot of rope. <laughs> then you have jars, which you mark with a rope. And then the witch has a bandana, which, or you could use a piece of yarn or something. Um, I don't think we have one. And uh, um, I guess you need a, a, a jar for each child. And you, they once you're... If you're tagged by the witch, you get put in a jar, and you have to stay there until, unless another person tags you. And so the witch is trying to tag everybody and put them in the jar, and all the people who are free are trying to go around and, and free the people from the jars. And so you just kind of go until everybody starts laughing, and then you switch to a different witch. So um, that's, uh, that's how that game's played. And I think that one got to be kind of wacky. <laughs> But it tires people out, and it was kind of fun. And let's see, one I forgot that um, also is up on that field. We tried to have this kind of set up. I think it's called Corn Cop Ring Toss, which was a game of, you know, skill development, you know, develops your hunting skill or your accuracy for boys, etc. 
we try to dig holes in the ground and stick the corn cobs. It's basically a version of, uh, you know, a horseshoe type of game. And um, so you try to dig these corn cobs in, which the mice have been nibbling on, and we have assorted rings of obviously homemade rings. And that's another just kind of, uh, kind of low key activity that kids of any age and older kids, you just tell them to stand farther away. Um, I actually tried to make a hoop out of corn husk once. I just love working with corn husks, so we'll have to, uh, and, but that, um, the hard part of that game is getting the corn husk to stay upright. I don't think we ever use sticks or anything. I think we tried to keep it to corn husks. I, I forgot that game on the, kind of the low key ones. So I think, that is about the whole list. I don't know if you guys want to try some hoops and sticks or play a game of Auntie Over. <laughs> Do you have any questions? I think like Farmer and the Girl already around, but they brought that over. Is that a circle game? Sort of. That's a good one, but I don't know. I Yeah, that's a good one. I like that because it's something that doesn't really take that long. You got that on tape? Oh, pressure top. There's a, a family of coyotes up where they were looking at living under the Miller house. Oh, really? Uh, I saw a deer up there, With too. With pups. That's all a game that I can think of. Oh, that was a great drug. Isn't that fun? I'll try to get up a little bit. Yeah, it's great. Yeah! yeah. yeah. Is there any difference between the thicker ones and the thinner ones? No, I just brought those up because in case we couldn't find the... I think... Yeah, we have all flavors here. Oh. I would imagine just two of the same is probably the. <laughs> Did they ever try marbles up here? Um. Or would that be kind oh, of like a right? I don't remember. How's our dad or Jack? This is a. Uh, uh, this is the latest. Uh -huh. and were these the ones that you talked about? Then? Yeah. Oh, uh huh. Um, some of these might be in the manual already. Would you like to know the ring around the rosy thing? Sure. I, I had to do this for a 